sadhus wandering about and teaching the people metaphysics <laughs> it is all madness our guru deva used to say an empty stomach is no good for religion poor people are leading a life of brutes due to ignorance interested sanyasis bent on doing good to others go from village to village disseminating education and seeking various ways to better the condition of all down to the chandala through oral teachings and by means of maps cameras globes and such accessories can that bring forth good in time If a mountain does not come to Muhammad Muhammad must go to the mountain We as a nation have lost our individuality We have to give back to the nation its lost individuality and raise the masses To effect these first we need men I do not know what your religion is but my heart has expanded I do not take into consideration whether people accept his name or not but I am ready to lay down my life to help his teachings his life and his message spread all over the world The parliament of religion is being organized for this My mind tells me so you will see to verify at no distant date i am the first monk to come over to these western countries It is the first time in the history of the world that a Hindu monk has crossed the ocean. 
It is the weak heart that has driven me out of India to seek some help for those I love. And here I am. The expense I'm bound to run into here is awful. On an average, it costs me one pound a day. A cigar costs eight annas of our money. All those rosy ideas before starting have melted. And I have now to fight against impossible. the entry ticket for the Columbia exhibition at a reasonable rate. The services also include a trip to Ferry Wheel, Ice Skate House, Eastern Marvel, Japanese Bamboo House. It's only $50 per day, sir. You are from Boston? Okay, sir. See you soon. Excuse me? Yes. Can I get a room? No room. Could you uh, check? Money. Oh. A hundred times I had a mind to go out of the country and go back to India. But I am determined. And I have a call from the above. I see no way, but his eyes see. And I must stick to my guns, life or death. If I am to live longer here, my quaint dress will not do. People gather by hundreds in the streets to see me. What I want is to dress myself in a long black coat and keep a red robe and turban to wear when I lecture. All these must be born. Hooting in the streets on an account of my quaint dress. Starvation. Gold. These are what I have to fight against. He's going to die. Yes, I think so. But my dear boy, no great things were ever done without great labor. I may perish of cold or hunger in this land. I have traveled 12 years with this load in my heart and this idea in my mind. I have gone from door to door of the so-called rich and great. With a bleeding heart, I have traveled half the world to this strange land seeking help. On the morning of the opening of the parliament, we all assembled in a building called the Art Palace. There was a grand procession and we were all marshaled to the platform. Imagine, a hall below 
and a huge gallery above, packed with six or seven thousand men and women representing the best culture of the country, and on the platform, learned men of all the nations of the earth. And I, who never spoke in public in my life to address this august assembly? All men have a common creator and consequently it was opened in great form with music and ceremony and speeches. I was so nervous that I couldn't venture to speak in the morning. Of course, my heart was fluttering and my tongue nearly dried up. Chakravarti of Theosophy made a nice speech. Mazumdar of Brahmo Samaj, a nicer heart. one, and they were much applauded. They were all prepared and came with ready-made speeches. I was a fool and had none. Dr. Burroughs now, introduced me. From India will address the gathering. I bowed down to Devi Saraswati and stepped up. Sisters and brothers of America. A deafening applause of two minutes followed. It fills my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of the monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of all religions. And I thank you in the name of millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. My thanks also to some of the speakers on this platform who referring to the delegates from the Orient have told you that these men from far off nations may well claim the honor of bearing to different lands the idea of toleration. I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. I will quote to you my brethren few lines from a hymn which I remember to have repeated from my earliest childhood which is every day repeated by millions of human beings. As different streams having their sources in different places, all mingle their water in the sea. So, O oh Lord, the different paths which men take through different tendencies, various though they appear, crooked or straight, all lead to Thee. I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honor of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism, of all persecution with the sword or with the pen, and of all un uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. When it was finished, I sat down almost exhausted with emotion. All the newspapers announced that my speech was the hit of the day and I became known to the whole of America. And the two, with what effect? I may quote to you from a few newspapers and magazines already at hand. I need not be self-conceited, but to you in confidence I'm bound to say, because of your love, that no Hindu made such an impression in America. But eloquent as were many of the brief speeches, no one as well expressed the spirit of the parliament and its limitations as the Hindu monk. His culture, his eloquence 
and his fascinating personality have given us a new idea of Hindu civilization. His fine, intelligent face and his deep musical voice, prepossessing one at once in his favor, he speaks without notes, presenting his facts and conclusions with the greatest art and the most convincing sincerity, raising often to rich, inspiring eloquence. Vivekananda is undoubtedly the greatest figure in the parliament of religions. After hearing him, we feel how foolish it is, how foolish it is to send missionaries to this learned nation. Herald, the greatest newspaper here. Even the most bigoted ones admitted that uh, this man with his handsome face and magnetic presence is undoubtedly the most prominent figure in the parliament, etc., etc. Now, after all these quotations, do you think that it was worthwhile to send a sannyasi to America? <laughs> I am now out of want. Many of the handsomest houses in this city are open to me. I can, if I will, live here all my life in the greatest luxury. But I am a sannyasi. And India, with all thy faults, I love thee. People here are sleeping on beds of flowers. And what do they not enjoy? While people in my country are dying of starvation. Mother, will there be no way for them? I have to talk a lot about myself because I owe that to you. I was born in Bengal. My father and mother fasted for years and years so that I would be born. At my birth, my father had a horoscope taken of my life but would never tell me what it was. I know that it was consciously that my mother brought me into the world to be what I am. The love which my mother gave me has made me what I am. And I owe a debt to her that I can never repay. Ma. How many times have I seen my mother going to take her first meal when it was two o'clock? And someone would come and knock on the door and say, and there would be no other food in the house except what was for my mother. She would give that to him willingly and wait for her own. This was her life and she liked it. I have such a memory. When I was two years old, I used to play with my psyche as being a vairagi. Clothed in ashes and kopina. When a sadhu came to beg, they used to lock me in upstairs to prevent my giving away too much. <laughs> I felt I was also this. And for some mischief I had done, I had to be sent away from Shiva. No wonder my family increased my feeling. And when I was naughty, they would say, Shiva, Shiva, 
so many austerities and yet Shiva sent me this demon instead of a good soul. <laughs> and then when I was rebellious, they would empty a can of water over me saying Shiva, Shiva. And then I would be all right. Always. Always. Even now, when I feel mischievous, that word keeps me straight. Shiva, Shiva. Tathaya, Tathaya, Nache Bhola, Bamba, Baba, Jegala. Tathaya, Tathaya, Nache Bhola. Shiva, Shiva. It is a matter of astonishment that this happened every night for a long time. As soon as I went to bed, two ideals appeared before me since I had reached my youth. One vision, one vision presented me as a man of endless wealth and prosperity, innumerable servants and dependents, high rank and dignity, great pomp and power. I certainly felt that I had the power to achieve this. The next moment, I felt as if I had given up everything of the world and was leading a life of a renunciate, <laughs> putting on a lawn cloth, eating whatever was available without any effort, sleeping under the trees, and solely depending on God's will. These two pictures, according to which I could mold my life, arose in my mind. But the latter would grip my mind in the end. Some years ago, when I visited my home, my father having died, I came across a chat among some papers in my mother's possession and saw from it that I was destined to become a wanderer on the face of the earth. I studied hard for 12 years and became a graduate of Calcutta University. At the beginning of this 19th century, it was feared that religion was at an end. Under the tremendous sledgehammer blows of scientific research, old superstitions were crumbling away like masses of porcelain. Those to whom religion meant only a bundle of creeds and meaningless ceremonial were in despair. This skepticism reached me. And for a time, I felt as if I must give up all hopes of religion. In the city of Calcutta, I wandered from place to place in search of religion. And everywhere I asked the lecturer, after hearing a very big lecture. Sir, have you seen God? The man was taken aback at the idea of seeing God. And the only man who said, I have, was Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And only so, but he said, I will put you in the way of seeing him too. This man came to live near Calcutta, the capital of India, the most important university town in our country, which was sending out skeptics and agnostics by the hundreds every year. This old man was peculiar. He didn't go much after intellectual scholarship, scarcely studied books. But when he was a boy, he was seized with this tremendous idea of getting truth direct. 
he first started by studying his own religion and then he got the idea that he must get the truth of other religions and with that idea he joined all the sects one after another he would eat and dress like the people he wanted to understand take their initiation and use their language one must learn he said to put oneself in another man's soul and this was his home no one ever before in india had become christian and muhammadan and a vaishnava by turn and when he had gone through with all that he came to the conclusion that they were all good they are all in so many ways leading to the same goal long before the idea of universal religion and brotherly feelings between sects were discussed and mooted in any country in the world here had been a living man whose whole life was a parliament of religion many of these university men skeptics agnostics used to come and listen to him i went to hear him Yes, it was the temple garden at Dakshineshwar, <clears throat> in his own room. Uh... He looked like an ordinary man, with nothing remarkable <clears throat> about him. Uh... Uh... संसार विदेशे विदेशीर बेसे भ्रम कैन अकार मन चलो निज निकेत विषय पंचक आर भूत ग विषय पंचक आर भूत गान सब तोर पर क्यों नपन पर प्रेम कैन हो अचेत bhuli che apu he went into samadhi jane mono chalo nijo nike tane a a well i sang the song but shortly after he suddenly rose and taking me by hand led me to the northern veranda shutting the door behind him He stood before me and began to address me with folded hands. And to my utter surprise, he began to shed profuse tears of joy as he held my hand and addressing me most tenderly as one long familiar to him. Ami jani, ami jani. Lord, I know You are the ancient sage Nara, the incarnation of Narayana, born on earth to remove the miseries of mankind and so on. Jani ami prophu, tumi shei urat anurishi, narurupi Narayan. 
I was altogether taken aback by his conduct. Jibir Durugoti Nibaron Kurte Unurai Shori did Harun Kurcho. Who is this man whom I've come to see? He must be stark mad. Why, I'm just the son of Vishwanath Datta, and yet he dares to address me thus. <laughs> I returned to my friends. I sat and watched him. There was nothing wrong with his words, <laughs> movements, or behavior towards others. Noreen <laughs> ए ध्यान सिद्ध जन्म थेके ही ध्यान सिद्ध मां सब मिले जाते ही मे बी अ मैड मैन आई थॉट बट ओनली द फॉर्चूनेट फ्यू कैन हैव सच रिनंसिएशन इवन इफ इनसेन दिस होली मैन इज द होलीएस्ट ऑफ द होली अ ट्रू सेंट एंड फॉर दैट अलोन ही डिजर्व्स द रेवरेंट होमेज ऑफ द मैनकाइंड बोलो तुम्हें शीघ्र एक दिन एखने का एकाकी आस उच कन्फ्लिक्टिंग थट्स आई बाउट बिफोर हेम एंड बेक टू लिव टू रिटर्न टू कैलकाटा For the first time, I had seen a man who did say that he saw God, and that religion was a reality to be felt. <laughs> All skepticism was brushed aside. I began to go to that man day after day, and I actually saw that religion could be given. My master used to say, "Religion can be taken and given more tangibly, more than anything else in the world." master my master at first i did not accept most of what the master said once i said to him the forms of god and things like that which you see in your vision are all fragments of your imagination i did not believe him anything. one day he said to me some people call me god Let a thousand people call you God, but I shall certainly not call you God as long as I don't know it to be true. Then why do you come here? I come here to see you, not to listen to you. He was very much pleased. Ramakrishna came to teach the religion of today. constructive not destructive he had to go afresh to nature to ask for facts and he got scientific religion which never said believe but see and they were not peculiar to him not did he claim that they were but but i don't find a marvelous miracle than the way this mad brahmin used to handle human minds like lumps of clay breaking molding and remolding them at ease and filling them with ideas by a Mere touch. I cannot think or talk of Sri Ram Krishna without being overwhelmed. How shall I speak of him? His love for me. once we spoke of our revealed books of the vedas of the bible of quran at the close of our talk this old man asked me to go to the table and pick up a book ah acha ah mejer upore oi boi ta ne Na na na, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I
among other things which contain the forecast of the rainfall during the year acha ebar por bhadurer meg i read out the quantity of rain that was to fall shedin jhor brishti hoy jodi borshe paushe kori hoy tushe hm jodi borshe maghe shesh dhonno raja punno desh ha ebar he then said now take the book and squeeze the book bhalo kore ningra <laughs> I did so. And he said, "Why my boy? Not a drop of water comes out. Until the water comes out, it is all book." To dharmo jodi to ke bhagobani na chenalu. So until your religion makes you realize God, it is useless. He who studies books for religion reminds one of the fables of the ass, which carried a heavy load of sugar on its back, but did not know the sweetness of it. Shad jane na ki uga da. <laughs> then came a terrible time to me came such a misfortune my father died and at that time we were left poor even before the period of mourning was over i had to go about in search of a job starving barefooted I wandered from office to office with an application in hand but everywhere I went the door was slammed in my face this first contact with reality convinced me that unselfish sympathy is a rarity in the world there is no place for the weak the poor and the destitute One day weary and footso I sat down in the shade of Octoloni monument on the Maidan A friend or two were with me One of them sang by the way of consoling me Oi Naren ut ut dekh bahi che krupa ghana brahma nishpash pavane Ah. Will you please stop that song? Such fancies may be pleasing to those who are born with a silver spoon in their mouth and have no starving relatives at home. Yes. There was a time when I too thought like that. But today, before the hard facts of life, it seems like grim mockery. Sometimes when I found that there was not enough provision for my family and my purse was empty I would pretend to my mother that I had an invitation to dine out and remain practically without food Out of self respect I couldn't disclose the facts to the others or oh, the agony of those days I was living in hell In spite of all these troubles however I never lost faith in the existence of God of his divine mercy every morning taking his name I got up and went out in search of a job one day my mother heard me and said bitterly tujhse humne chup kar chhoda chhele wala tha ke khali bhagwan bhagwan hush you fool You have been crying yourself hoarse for God from your childhood and what has he done for you? I was stung. Doubt crossed my mind. Does God really exist? If so, does he really hear the fervent prayers of man? Then why is there no response to my passionate appeals? I was extremely annoyed with God. That was also the most opportune moment for doubt to creep in my heart. Soon the reports gained the currency that I was an atheist and did not scruple to drink or even frequent the houses of ill fame. This hardened my heart still more. 
But I thought perhaps Sri Ramakrishna would believe that I was deeply wounded at heart. Never mind. If good and bad opinions of a man rest on such flimsy foundation, I don't care. In this miserable world, there's nothing reprehensible in a man who is seeking for a brief respite should resort to anything. Not only that, if I am once convinced of the efficacy of such a course, I shall not, through the fear of anybody, shrink from following it. When one of his favorite disciples said to him with tears in his eyes, मुख देख Sri Ramakrishna was the only person who ever since he met me believed in me uniformly throughout even my own mother and brothers did not do so it was unflinching trust in me and love that bound me to him forever one day when my master met anada guha he said to him narendra's father has died and his family is in a state of great privation it will be good if his friends helped him now with some money after anada had left i scolded him He wept and said, "Narain, alas, for your sake, I could beg from door to door. Huh? He tamed me by his love. Yet I fought so long, my six years fight." আমার ইচ্ছা হয় সুখদেবের মতো পাঁচ ছ দিন ক্রমাগত একেবারে সমাধিতে ডুবে থাকি তারপর শুদ্ধ শরীর রাখার জন্য খানিকটা নিচে নেমে এসে আবার সমাধিতে চলে যায় তুই এত বড় আধার তোর মুখে ওই কথা আমি ভেবেছিলাম কোথায় তুই একটা বিশাল বট গাছের মতো হবি তোর ছায়ায় হাজার হাজার লোক আশ্রয় পাবে তা না হয় তুই কি না নিজের মুক্তি চাস I loved him you see and that was what held me I saw his marvelous purity I felt his wonderful love his greatness had not dawned on me then all that came afterwards when i had given in আমি এসব পারবো না তুই করবি না তোর কার করবে I fought my master for 6 years with the result that I know every inch of the way. 
every inch of the way. Then came the sad day when our old master died. I went there when I was about 16. Some of the other boys were still younger, some a little older. When my master left his body, we were we were a dozen penniless boys and unknown boys. But together, we conceived that this ideal had to be spread. We shall begin a universal religion here and now. We will not wait. We will show the spirituality of the Hindus, the mercifulness of the Buddhists, the activities of the Christians, and the brotherhood of Muhammadans by our practical lives. We had no friends. Who would listen to a few boys with their crank notions? Nobody. At least in India, boys are nobodies. Just think of it. A dozen boys telling people vast, big ideas and saying that they're determined to work these ideas in life. <laughs> Against us were a hundred powerful organizations struggling hard to nip us in the bud. Thus went on a band of boys. Everybody laughed. The only thing we got from those around us was a kick and a curse. That was all. Of course, we had to beg from door to door for our own food. Got a piece of bread from here and there. The refuse of everything. We got hold of a broken down building with hissing cobras. Hissing underneath. And because that was the cheapest, we went into that house and lived there. Who would sympathize with us? None. None. Except one. That lady, Sri Ramakrishna's wife. Her sympathy brought blessings and hope. There have been days when the mutt was without a grain of food. If the rice was collected from begging, there was no salt to take it with. On some days there would be only rice and salt. Boiled bimba leaves, rice and salt. This was the menu for a month at a stretch. Ten years were spent without a ray of light. Ten more years with my health breaking all the time, sometime one meal at nine in the evening, another at eight in the morning, another after two days, another after three days. I see no chances of success while remaining near Calcutta. In Calcutta live my mother and two brothers. Since my father's death, it is going very hard with them. They even have to go fasting at times. To crown all, some of the relatives drove them away from the ancestral residence. A matter of course in litigation. Ki khunchish, ghade te chal baron to baba, o khani khudish na. E to dada elo bolle, chal anbe, torkari anbe, ta khun ami ranna kore thevo. Dekbi ki bhalo kore thora dujone khabi. Shotti? Hey. Shotti? Shotti re baba, shotti. Khoto ranna kore dobo to der. Khoto shundho, shandesh, nishti, dada anbe, dura khabi. Or, dujane mile khurte jabi. I have seen this ideal man and yet fail myself to get on with anything to the end. This is my profound misery. No compromise is the watchword. This is the ideal and this has got to be carried out. If we meet the king, though we die, we must give him a bit of our minds. If the peasant, the same. My master used to say, laying his arm upon my shoulder, Naren, you are a hero. The very sight of you inspires me with courage. Ha, I leave this place before the letter reaches you. I have my own plans for the future. And 
they shall be a secret. That made me go from the Himalayas to the Cape Cameroon, from Indus to Brahmaputra. Many a times I've been in the jaws of death, starving, foot sore and weary. For days I had no food and could walk no further. It was true. I often used to sleep under the banyan tree with a bowl of rice given to me by a kindly peasant. But it is equally true that I was also a guest in the palace of a great Maharaja and a slave girl was appointed to wave a peacock feather fan over me all night long. <laughs> in the course of my wandering, I was in a certain place when people came to me in crowds and asked for instructions. Though it seemed almost impossible, people made me talk for three days and nights without giving me a moment of rest. You should be ashamed of yourself. The youth of India should write the history of their own country. The British have interpreted the history of our country according to their conveniences. What India wants is somebody who can portray her in proper light. The glory of man is ah. that he is a thinking being. It is the nature of man to think and therein he differs ah. from animal. Panditji, I have nothing whatever to do with ritual or dogma. They did not even ask me whether I had eaten. Why do you meet Rajas and Maharajas only? Because I can't go from door to door. If I come to you, tell you and convince you about my ideas, it will automatically reach the masses. Swamiji. You are a very sincere sadhu. Thank you. May God bless you. On the third night, when all visitors had left, a low-caste poor man came up to me and said, Swamiji, we have seen that you have not eaten for three days. You have not eaten for three days. Do you have something to eat for eating? Hearing this, the man shrank in fear. He was a subject of the Maharaja of Khetri and was afraid that if the latter came to hear that he, a cobbler, had given food to a sannyasi, he would be severely dealt with and possibly banished from the state. But out of kindness of his heart, even though he feared the consequences, he brought me the cooked food. I shed tears of love and gratitude and thought thousands of such large-hearted men live in lowly huts and we despise them as low caste and untouchables. That is why you see the lowest of the low in India holding the most exalted religious ideas. It is a practical want of intellectual education about life on this earth that they suffer from. I must tell you, there is a great hope for them because they are the most gentlest people on this earth. The best soldiers the English have recruited are from the peasantry of India. Death is a thing of no importance to them. They must have better piece of bread and better piece of rags on their bodies. If you rob them, tax them, murder them, do anything to them, they will be quiet and gentle. So long as you leave them free to practice their religion. Leave our liberty to worship our gods and take everything else. That is their attitude. When the British touch them there, the trouble starts. That was the real cause of the 
1857 mutiny they will not bear religious repression my plan is to reach these masses of india i traveled in search of funds in india but do you think people in india were going to spend money many and many india could not understand me how could they their minds never strayed beyond the everyday routine business of eating and drinking i depended on no one in india gurudeva showed me the way out the people at madras of their own accord in conjunction with his highness of mysore ramnad and ketri made every arrangement to send me up here to america our country is poor in social virtues so is this country lacking in spirituality i give them spirituality and they give me money you may perhaps think what utopian nonsense is all this you little know what is in me the christian is not to become a hindu or a buddhist not a hindu or a buddhist to become a christian but each must assimilate the spirit of the others and yet preserve his own individuality and grow according to his own law of growth if the parliament of religions has shown anything to the world it is this it has proved to the world that holiness charity and purity are not the exclusive possessions of any church in the world and that every system has produced men and women of the most exalted character in the face of this evidence if anybody dreams of the exclusive survival of his own religion and destruction of the others i pity him from the bottom of my heart and point out to him that upon the banner of every religion will soon be written in spite of resistance hell and not fire assimilation and not destruction harmony and peace and not dissension we can get rid of anything but not this curse jealousy this is a national sin with us as it please lord i met here with mr mazumdar he was cordial at first but when the chicago population began to flock to me in overwhelming numbers then grew the cancer in his mind mazumdar slandered to the missionaries about me saying that i was a cheat a nobody a thug and he accused me of coming here and pretending to be a monk the fathers they they fabricated and circulated most horrible lies about me in this country they spread many slanders by publishing them in the newspapers and again in calcutta he is telling them that i am leading the most sinful life in america especially and chaste lord bless him i did not come to america for the sake of the parliament of religions who cared about the parliament of religions i traveled 12 years all over india and finding no way to work for my countrymen and that is why i came to america I began lecturing in Chicago and other cities. Every week I had to deliver some 12 or 15 or even more lectures at times. I did not come to seek name and fame. It was forced upon me. And I am one man who did defend his country and I have given them such ideas as they never expected from a Hindu. And our Hindu people did not even move a finger to tell the americans that i represented them and it's one year 
since I've been here. And not one man of worth from India thought it fit to make the Americans know that I'm no cheat. A God man was born in India. He was the great Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And round him, this band of sannyasi is slowly gathering. They will do the work. This requires an organization. Money, a little, at least to set the wheel in motion. So I crossed over to America. And our countrymen could not even do so much for me as to say to the American people that I was a real sannyasi and no cheat. And I represented the Hindu religion. Even this much, the expenditure of a few words, they could not do. Bravo, my countrymen. My greatest fault is that I love my country only too, too well. Swami? Swami? Do Indian mothers really throw their babies to the crocodiles? Yes, ma'am. They threw me in. But like your fabled Yona, I got out again. How many of you have read the sacred books of the Hindus? And therefore have the first-hand knowledge of the religion? Please raise your hands. And yet, you dare to judge us? I am a rather plain spoken man, but I mean well. I want to tell you the truth. I am not here to flatter you. That is not my business. If I wanted to do that, I would have opened a fashionable church in Fifth Avenue, New York. You are my children. I want to show you the way out of self to God by pointing out to you your errors, your defects and your vanities. Everything that has selfishness as its basis, competition for its right hand and enjoyment as its goal must die sooner or later. If you want to live, go back to Christ. Go back to Him who had nowhere to lay his head. Better be ready to live in rags with Christ than to live in palaces without him. Oh. If I only had one man with some true abilities and brains to back me in India. I don't care what they, even my own people say about me in Calcutta, except for one thing, I have an old mother. She has suffered much all her life and in the midst of all, she could bear to give me up for the service of God and man. But to have given me up, the most beloved of her children, her hope to live a beastly, immoral life in a far distant country, as Mazumdar was telling in Calcutta, would have simply killed her. I was never a missionary, nor ever would be one. My place is in the Himalayas. I can with full conscience say, My God, I saw terrible misery among my brethren. I searched and discovered the way out of it, tried my best to apply the remedy, but failed. So thy will be done. A huge locomotive has rushed on over the line. A small worm that was creeping on one of its rails saved its life by crawling out of the path of the locomotive. Yet this little worm, so insignificant that it can be crushed in a moment, is a little something. While this locomotive, so huge, so immense, is only an engine, 
a machine. Every moment I expected something from India. No, it never came. I was in torture at every moment. No, not even a newspaper from India. Waited, waited months after month. Nothing came, not a voice. It is a punishment for relying upon man. I committed a terrible error of calculating upon others' help once in my life and I have paid heavily for it. My religion is to learn. I read my Bible better in the light of your Bible. And the dark prophecies of my religion become brighter when compared with those of your prophets. It was my fault. I have launched my boat in waves. Come what may. Uttishtata Jagrata Prapyavaran Nibhodata Through the vistas of the past, the voices of the centuries is coming down to us. The voices of the sages of the Himalayas and recluses of the forests. The voices that came down to the Semitic races. The voice that spoke in the Buddha Detroit lecture. I got nine hundred dollars. That is. 2,700 rupees. In other lectures, I earned in one $2,500, that is rupees 7,500 in one hour, but got only $200. I was cheated by a roguish lecture bureau. Only about $3,000 remains. I don't know what I'm going to do next. The Calcutta meeting held in the honor on 5th September 1894. The president was the chief nobleman of Calcutta. And the other man, Mahesh Chandra Nyayaratna, is the principal of Sanskrit College and chief of Brahmin in all of India. have gained beyond expectations. The Prophet has been honored with a vengeance. What a rogue am I that in the face of such mercies, the faith taught us. There is a God, a father, a mother, who never leaves a children. Never, never, never. A good news after a long interval. They call me illustrious, wonderful, and all sorts of nonsense. But they forward to me the gratitude of the whole nation. I'm weeping like a child at his mercy. Swami. I got vexed at getting loads of newspapers from India. I had to write to them to stop sending those newspapers. Now they will write what I ate on such and such a date and how... And how I sneezed. It was all my foolery.
hora se engana. If people in India want me to keep strictly to my Hindu diet, then please tell them to send me a cook and money enough to keep him. This silly bossism without a mite of help make me laugh. <sighs> and on the other hand, if the missionaries are telling that I have broken two verbs of sannyasa, chastity and poverty, then tell them they are big liars. I've been asked again and again in the letters from India to go over. I have no idea when I go back. But I've seen enough of this country, I think. So I will go to Europe, a few months work in England, and then I'll go back to India and hide myself for a few years. Or forever. It's a queer life, mine. No rest. Rest will be my death. Mujhe marne ke liye bhi I have no time even to die. Long hmm? is I long, long for my rags, my sleep under trees, and my food from my begging. Oh. I work, work, work. Earn my own breath and help my country. My success is due to my okay, popular style. The greatness of a teacher consists in the simplicity of the language. Simplicity is the secret. My ideal of language is my master's language. Most colloquial, yet most expressive. I direct my attention to the individual, to make him strong, to teach him that he himself is divine. That is really the ideal conscious or unconscious of every religion. I am prepared to follow any course that are open to attend meetings in people's drawing rooms or elsewhere to answer letters or discuss personally. It is taught in the West that society began some 1800 years ago with the onset of the New Testament. But it is not true as regards the whole world. But why didn't your rishis come to England to teach us? Because there was no England to come to. Would they come and preach to the forest? Oh, yes. I propound a philosophy which can serve as a basis to every religious system in the world. And my attitude towards them is that of extreme sympathy. My teaching is antagonistic to none. I form no sect or organization. I know very little, and that little I teach without any reserve. My teaching is my own interpretation of our ancient books, in the light of which my master shed upon them. I claim no supernatural authority. Whatever in my teaching may appear to the highest intelligence and be accepted by thinking men, the adoption of that will be my reward. <laughs> Come on, George. Come on. Ah, let me. It smells good. I made a dish. Oh. <laughs> it's a delicious mixture of uh, saffron, oh, lavender, very, maize, very cubebs, good. cinnamons, uh, cloves, cream, cardamoms, lime juice, onions, uh -huh. um, oh. uh, almond, pepper. And raisins and rice. Oh. Please. 
My plan, as I was saying, is to start two centers in India. My interests are international, not Indian alone. At 20 years of age, I was the most unsympathetic, uncompromisingly fanatic. I would not walk on the footpath on the theatre side of the streets in Calcutta. But now, at uh, 33, I can live in the same house with prostitutes and never would think of saying a word of reproach to them. Is it degenerate? Or is it that I'm brought out into the universal love, which is the Lord Himself? Bold words, bolder deeds, that's what we want. myself couldn't eat it. There was no asafetida. Pardon me? Asafetida. Hing. Hing. Ah. Though it would have made it easier to swallow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been asked many times, Swami, why do you laugh so much and make so many jokes. I become serious sometimes when I have a stomach ache. <laughs> sometimes people speak out to my face. Swami, you're a priest. You should not be laughing and making so many jokes like ordinary men. Such levity does not look good on you. To which I reply, we are children of bliss. Why should one look somber and miserable. If one who lives in Lord becomes miserable, what is, the, what is the use of living in him? What is the use of such a God? Throw him overboard into the Pacific Ocean. We do not want him. <laughs> Three more lectures and my London work are finished for this season. Dear Lord says, Start for old India. And I obey. Amarma Twam Hi Dara Ami Jani Go Dino Daya Moi Tumi Durga Mete Duko I was asked by an English friend on the eve of my departure, Swami, how do you like now your motherland after four years' experience of the glorious, luxurious and powerful West? I said to him, India I loved before I came away. Now, the very dust of India has become holy to me. The very air is now to me holy. It is now the holy land, the place of pilgrimage, the Tirtha.
Bold has been my message to the people of the West. Bolder is my message to my beloved countrymen. We all hear so much about the degradation of India. There was a time when I also believed in it. But today, standing on the vantage ground of experience, I confess in all humility that I was wrong. For the last thousand years or more, you are told that you are weak, you're nobody, you're good for nothing, and you have come to believe yourself such. When a man has begun to hate himself, the last blow has come. When a man has begun to be ashamed of his ancestors, the end has come. Here am I. One of the least of the Hindu race, yet proud of my race, proud of my ancestors. I am proud to call myself a Hindu. I am proud that I am one of your unworthy servants. I am proud that I am a countryman of yours, you, the descendants of the sages, of the most glorious rishis the world ever saw. Therefore, have faith in yourselves. By the grace of the Lord, those who look down upon us as weak and low regard me as their teacher. I bequeath to you, young men, this sympathy, this struggle for the poor, the ignorant, the oppressed. Go now this minute to the temple of Parthasarathy and before him who was a friend of the poor and the lowly cowherds of Gokula who accepted the invitation of a prostitute in preference to that of nobles and saved her in his incarnation as Buddha. A. Hey, down on your faces before him and make a great sacrifice the sacrifice of a whole life for them. When I see Indians dressed in European apparels and costumes, the thought comes to my mind. Perhaps they feel ashamed to own their own nationality and kinship with the ignorant, poor, illiterate, downtrodden people of India. Westerners have now taught us that those stupid, ignorant, low caste millions of India clad only in a loin cloth are non-Aryans and therefore no more are kith and kin. Oh India, with this slander of others, with this base imitation of others, with this dependence on others, this slavish weakness, would thou with these provisions only scale the highest pinnacle of civilization and greatness? What can you expect of a race which for hundreds of years has been busy discussing such momentous problems as whether we should drink a glass of water with the right hand or the left? What more degradation can there be than that the greatest minds of a country have been discussing about the kitchen for several hundreds of years? Discussing whether I may touch you or you touch me. And what is the penance for this touching? In America, beds are very cozy and soft. <laughs> 
But there have been many nights when I could not sleep on those soft beds, thinking of the extreme poverty of my own people. I have spent nights on the floor thinking without any sleep or rest. Well, if I have a mind, I can sit up in Samadhi in a Himalayan cave. Why then don't I do so? And why am I here? Only the sight of the country's misery and the thought of its future do not let me remain quiet anymore. Feel, therefore, my would-be reformers, my would-be patriots. Do you feel? Do you feel that millions and millions of the descendants of the gods and of sages have become next door neighbors to brutes? Do you feel that millions are starving today and millions have been starving for ages? Does it make you restless? Does it make you sleepless? Has it gone into your blood, coursing through your veins, becoming consonant with your heartbeats? Has it made you almost mad? Are you seized with that one idea of the misery of ruin? And have you forgotten all about your name, fame, your wives, your children, your property, and even your own bodies? Have you done that? That is the first step to become a patriot. The very first step. <laughs> I was one man in America and another here. There, first they ill-treated me as if I had not my trousers on. <laughs> I would not be admitted to a decent hotel. Here, the whole nation is looking upon me as their authority. Here, princes draw my carriage. These feet have been washed, wiped, worshipped by descendants of kings. <laughs> There has been progress through the country, which none ever commanded in India. Shiva. By the way, I'm glad to find that I'm aging fast. My hair is turning grey in bundles and my face is getting wrinkled up all over. Losing flesh has given me 20 years of age more. It is bad for a preacher to be young, don't you think so? <laughs> I do. People have more confidence in an old man and it looks venerable. <laughs> Yet, the old rogues are the worst rogues in the world. <laughs> oh, though white hair, glory unto thee. Hallelujah. The result of this steady, tremendous work on a Bengali constitution is diabetes. It is a hereditary foe and is destined to carry me off at best in a few years' time. Mm. Eating only meat and drinking no water seems to be the only way to prolong my life. No bread, no rice, no potatoes, not even a lump of sugar in my coffee. Mm. Mm. I am unfortunately like the circus clown who makes others laugh himself.
My health is about the same. I don't find much difference. But I can use my voice, however, to make 3,000 people hear me and get good sleep too. After two hours of speaking, My hope for the future lies in the youth of character, intelligent, renouncing all for the service of others, and obedient, who can sacrifice their lives in working out my ideas and thereby doing good to themselves and the country at large. This is the time to decide your future, to decide now. Tell me. Will you possess the energy of youth when you are worn out and jaded? Rouse yourselves, therefore, for the time is short. There is great work to be done. The greater work is sacrifice of yourselves for the benefit of your race. Therefore, take up a great deal and give up your whole life for it. My plan for India, as it has been developed and centralized, is this. To reach the masses of India, I believe in God and I believe in man. I believe in helping the miserables. May I be born again and again and suffer thousands of miseries so that I may worship the only God that exists. The only God I believe in. My God, the wicked. My God, the miserable. My God, the poor of all races, of all species. The conviction has grown in my mind, after all my travels in various lands, that no great cause can succeed without an organization. Besides, the older I grow, the more everything seems to me to lie in manliness. My whole ambition in life is to set in motion a machinery which will bring noble ideas to the doors of everybody. <laughs> Women must be given education and left for themselves. After that, they will act as they think best. They will tell what reforms are necessary for them. Revive the old arts. Give them artistic cooking and sewing. Let them learn painting, photography, the cutting of designs in paper, gold, silver, filigree and embroidery. See that everyone knows something by which she can earn a living in case of need. Hmm? I do not believe in God or religion which cannot wipe the widow's tears and bring a piece of bread to the orphan's mouth. Religion is that which does not depend on books or prophets or saviors. And I believe in becoming entirely free from our holy teachers. Traveling through many cities of Europe and observing in them the comforts, the education of even the poor people, there was brought to my mind the state of our own people. What made the difference? Education was the answer I got. There must be centers to educate monks in the method of education. Swamiji, yes? this task is too difficult. To establish harmony and cooperation among people of various castes and sects that are current in this country. And to make them act in unison for a common purpose. Do not come here anymore if you think any task too difficult. By the grace of the Lord, 
everything becomes easy of achievement. Your duty is to serve the poor and the distressed without distinction of caste and creed. What business have you to think of the fruits of your action? Your duty is to go on working. Everything else will follow of itself. My method of work is to construct and not to destroy that which is already existing. You are all intelligent boys and you profess to be my disciples. Tell me, tell me what you have done. Can't you give away this one life for the sake of others? Let the reading of the Vedanta and practicing of meditation and the like be left for the next life. Let this body go in the service of others. And then I shall know that your coming to me has not been in vain. worked for this world but it doesn't give me a piece of bread without taking a pound of flesh I've not been destined to enjoy physically lying on the mattress only aggravates my illness I feel suffocated I now have to come down on the floor and lie down to get some relief. Jabakon bak bak karchi sharir to to kyon kharab hochi Rajen हाँ स्वामीजी जेनरेक हाँ स्वामीजी मिसेस जॉनसन इस ऑफ़ द ओपिनियन दैट नो स्पिरिचुअल पर्सन ऑफ़ टू बी इल इट सीम्स टू हर दैट माय माय स्मोकिंग इस सिंफुल बट व्हाट एवर ऑफ़ माय मदर्स वर्क वाज़ टू बी एक्सप्लिश्ड थ्रू मी शी मेड मी डू and now she's flung me aside, breaking down my body and my mind. Her will be done. I feel my task is done. At most, three or four years of life is left. I shall never see forty. प्रार्थना करी जेन का पुरुषर मत Heed then no more how body lives or goes. Its task is done. Let karma float it down. Let one put garlands on, another kick this frame. Say not. No praise or blamed can be where. Praiser praised and blamer blamed are one. 
Thus be thou come. Sanyasi, bold. Om Tat Sat Om. The only thought that disturbs me is whether I shall be able to give effect to all my ideas within this period. I'm a dying man, have no time to fool in. I must see my machine in strong working order. And then knowing sure that I have put in a liver for the good of humanity, in India at least, I will sleep without caring what will be next. I have one great sin rankling in my breast. To do service to the world, I have sadly neglected my mother. My last desire is to serve my mother, at least. She has suffered much through me. I must try to smooth on her last days. I want to live with my mother. I want to build a little decent home for her. And I am going to take her on a pilgrimage. <laughs> I have brought only misery to my people all my life. I am trying to fulfill this one wish of hers. This will smoothen smoothen my last days and as well as those of my mother's Jai Shri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa Devu Ki Jai Jai Shri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa Devu Ki Jai Eshe chhe nu tan manush dek bhi jodhi aye chole Eshe chhe nu tan manush dek bhi jodhi aye chole Tar bhi beko boi rakko juli dui kade shodha jule Shri Ramakrishna said to me Wherever you take me on your shoulders and place me, there I will go and stay. It is therefore that I am myself carrying him on my shoulders to the new mud grounds. Know it for certain that Sri Ramakrishna will keep his feet fixed for the welfare of many for a long, long time. धर्मस्वरूपिने अवतार वरिष्ठा राम कृष्ण
This boy, born of poor Brahmin parents in an out of the way village, is literally being worshipped in lands which have been fulminating against heathen worship for centuries. I place this great spiritual ideal before you. Judge him not through me. I am only a weak instrument. Let not his character be judged by seeing me. It does not matter who preaches Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, whether I or you or anybody else. But him, I place before you. And it is for you to judge, for the good of the nation to judge now, what you shall do with this great ideal of life. If this nation wants to rise, take my word for it, it will have to rally enthusiastically around his name. He is the method. That wonderful unconscious method. Do you know what I was thinking? This mud will be a center of learning and spiritual discipline. We must see to it that people from all creeds and sects, from the Brahmana down to the Chandala, may come here and find their ideals manifested. We take in all that has been in the past, enjoy the light of the present, and open every window of the heart for all that will come in the future. Namaste. This mat we are building will harmonize all creeds, all standpoints. Chalo. Just as Sri Ramakrishna held highly liberal views, this mat too will be center for propagating similar ideas. The blazing height of universal harmony that will emanate from here will flood the world. Yes, I know, the greatest of all sacrifices to me, of fame, of leadership, of power. Yes, uh, 101 between Brahmananda, Shivananda, Shardananda. Signed and sealed. Jai Shri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa Ki. I am resigned. <laughs> now I am free. As I have kept no power or authority or position for me in the work. I also have resigned from the presidentship of the Ramakrishna Mission. I'm so glad that the whole load is off me. I no longer represent anybody. I have served Sri Ramakrishna through mistakes and success for 20 years now. <laughs> now, I am quits. I want rest, a meal, a few books. <laughs> I'll buy a little place in the Himalayas, a whole hill, say about uh, 6,000 feet high, with a grand view of the eternal snows. There must be springs, a tiny lake, siddhars, Himalayan Siddhar forests and, and flowers and flowers everywhere and, and, 
and I'll have a little cottage in the middle and my vegetable garden in which I'll work myself and 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 my books and see the face of the man only once in a great while let the world go in ruins around my ears i would not care oh, my 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 how restless have i been all my life born nomad curious all my dreams about my own happiness as it were bound to come to nothing but about others well being they as a rule prove true <laughs> i have delivered my message i must go the shadow of a big tree do not let the smaller trees to grow i must go to make room aqua water pani vare naam dai jale allah god isha musha kali naam phede pode prajen coming to me ji Uh, this is a good dress. When I'm home, I'm in rags and go bed. <laughs> I'm happy. Mm. I was lending a hand in cutting a deep drain to take off the water from mud grounds. My Swami huge ji. stock is full of glee, and ah. so are the ducks and the geese. One of my ducks, unfortunately, died yesterday. Ah. Uh, One of my waggish old monks says, "Bujle, a kalyuga ke beche the ke aur kuno lab nahi. A kun to brusti hole, hanche dero thanda lagay, bangiro hanchi paay." Ex. Oh. Oh. Oh, Prajen. Swami ji. this body will never be fit again i shall have to leave it and bring another body to complete my work uh, i'm making ready for my death death has come to my bedside i have been through enough work and play Ah uh, that one This book has traveled with me all over the world I find these words written 7 years ago Yeah Now to seek a corner Now to seek a corner and lay myself to die and lay myself to die now to seek a corner and lay myself to die if i had found i had done no work but simply supported myself by imposing upon people i would have committed suicide today I'm satisfied in my conscience that I did not remain an idol swami. Uh, ooh, I can hardly sit up or write, but still feel duty bound to write this letter. <laughs> hmm? uh, fearing lest. it becomes my last one ah uh, 
know for certain that the work done by me is not the work of Vivekananda. It is his work. If one governor general retires, another is sure to be sent in his place by the emperor. যদি আর একটা বিবেকানন্দ থাকত তবে বুঝতে পারত বিবেকানন্দ কি করে গেল কালে কালে এমন শত শত বিবেকানন্দ জন্মাবে সামওয়ান আর আদা ওয়েল সার্টেনলি আরাইজ ফ্রম দিজ থাউজেন্ডস অফ ডিভোটিজ অফ শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণ who will be like me will be able to understand me it may be that i shall get out of my body cast it off like a disused garment but i shall not cease to work i shall inspire men everywhere so there will be no lack of vivekanandas If the world needs them thousands and millions of vivekanandas will appear caught you by the forelock still fear not what i have never done fleeing from the battle well <laughs> will that happen today rapt wonderment to the wonderful words of ramakrishna under the banyan tree at dakshineshwar that is my true nature work and activities doing good and so forth are all superimpositions now again i hear his voice the same old voice thrilling my soul only the voice of my master calling i come lord i come guru go tum ami aschi ami aschi mo chalo ni jo nike massage the other leg Oh, 
चलो जो निके स्वामी जी स्वामी जी स्वामी जी स्वामी जी स्वामी जी महाराज 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 The guide, the guru, the leader, the teacher has passed. The boy, the student, the servant is left.